Welcome back to The Morning Show, here on Arise News with me, Katira King. World Food Day 2017 and the African Development Bank have shown us how Africa's food security depends on attracting young people to agriculture and agribusiness. The bank also noted that the sector can potentially create wealth and employment for African youth, thereby stemming migration. Part of solving these problems in order to build a world where everyone can eat requires wasting less of what we grow, harvest and buy. We're now seeing an increase in people caring about what they eat and how they leave the world, reinstating our belief that it is indeed possible to build a system that can end hunger and malnutrition in our lifetime without destroying our planet. So today on Our Take, we discuss the varying ways the world chose to celebrate World Food Day and what that means for the continent. So good morning, good morning, good morning, hello, ladies. Hello, hello. Ooh. We're talking cake. <laughs> well, no, we're talking food, but we have cake in front yes, of us. There we go. As you can see, all I want is the cake. <laughs> but let's talk about those that do not have the luxuries of eating delicious cakes like the one we have in front of us. Now, World Food Day is celebrated on the 16th of October every year, and it's been commemorated by the United Nations. So we had the Pope delivering a speech, but we also had lots of other quality things happening around the world. So FIFA Under-17 chose to spend it with 70 underprivileged Indian girls, which I thought was lovely. And the African Development Bank has shown us here in Nigeria and on the continent that all we really need to do is invest in the agriculture sector. So what is our take on what they've said? First and foremost, I'm almost tempted to say that Femi Adeshino has been watching our show. <laughs> <laughs> because, he probably is. Because, because I mean, we did say this yes, just I mean, a couple on Monday, of days ago. Remember when we had, yes, yes. I mean, we had the farmer who had said the average age of farmers was 55 to about 75. So yes. to actually hear him say we need more young people in farming is great. I remember also healthy BNG that we had hutons, tiger nut shafts, for example, yes. to cereals and stuff. So, I mean, that is still basically taking food from instead of throwing it away and wasting it, actually we're producing it. Absolutely. So, um, absolutely. I mean, we're big on that here. And it's actually good to actually see that on an even bigger platform. Yeah. Um, yeah. But well, keep watching The Morning Show <laughs> for more information, <laughs> government. And, and, and then I think also days like this, for example, bring out some facts. So when you read, for example, about the World Food Programme saying yes. that there are 815 million people. That's, it's such a crazily high As in, figure. That is, and you know, and you begin to wonder how, yeah. like, 815 yeah. million people still go to bed hungry yeah. is shocking. But yeah. if you think about the rate, the space of people living in even Lagos that do not have access to funds to purchase food, that live below the one dollar a day median, mm -hmm. you know, then it makes sense. Lamide, what is your take on on the levels of hunger in the world, global hunger? Um, Basically, I think she said um, a lot of it because um, we need more people in agricultural sector. And I think a lot of young people are becoming more, you know, um, they're turning more towards no. that um, yeah. side. Because, for example, my brother left an oil company and is now a farmer. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. okay. so is it, is a successful farmer? Yeah, well, well <laughs> yeah, yeah, satisfied. That. Successful so, enough. Yeah successful enough you know and he's trying his best you know it's relatively a new business mm -hmm. but then again it's growing so okay. it's actually then i know a couple of other young people that are into agriculture as well so i think if you have more young people doing that it's going to not necessarily young if you just have more people into mm -hmm. agriculture sector it will reduce the prices of um you know, products and it makes it more affordable. So Absolutely. we don't have to import everything plus Thank rice. You. If we can grow rice in the country, it will crash the prices. Not rice, every other thing. Yeah, you know, absolutely. absolutely. Like that, so so in terms of things like climate change, for example, because we know that, you know, there are lots of other things that are changing, but climates are changing as well. So how will that affect agriculture going forward? I, I think like everything else, to be honest, you have to move with the tide. You can't Very control true. it. So once you can't control what you have, then there are countries who are continuing to do research to understand what is happening, what's the f um, future. Ha I mean, when people are even buying um, land in space, obviously you know that we've got the earth covered. <laughs> yeah. So we need to continually collaborate, um, use technology to ensure that we're also a step exactly. ahead. And I think that absolutely that once we can do that, then we can work with the new climates um, that, yeah, true, that happen. True. Yeah, and what do you think about this, Lamade, in terms true. of all the rains we're experiencing <laughs> in Lagos, in Nigeria as a whole? I mean, we know that rainy season, the shorter rainy season is supposed to happen right now, but not to the extent that we're experiencing it. So exactly. isn't that a factor of climate change? How will that affect, you know, farmers in the north, for example, and in producing tomatoes? Yes, it will, but research and development, development rather, basically will help us. You know, there's really nothing you can do about it. You just have to learn to 
you know, be dynamic, yeah, that, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 this is also the time where you need to move beyond this how we've been doing it. Because yes, clearly, exactly. I the way you're doing yes, it good like Absolutely. So Absolutely. That, climate is changing, changing, agriculture must too. Yes. You know, Pope Francis actually said, and I quote, that hunger is not something natural or self-evident. The fact that today so many people suffer from the scourge is due to a selfish and wrong distribution of resources to the merchandising of food. What is our take on, on Pope Francis's words? You see, the truth about it is, I know that obviously Pope Francis is a socialist, um, while you've got the merchandisers who are capitalists. Yes. Um, one way or the other, we all have to coexist. Uh, people are running a the business, they're not running the a charity. charity. <laughs> yes. So it's just really finding that middle ground where, for example, CSR um, comes in. Yes. So yes, we may be making all this money. There are people buying our products, we're offering value, but we're also giving back, as we mm -hmm. talked about yesterday. So I think it's just really that balance between, look, we're not a, we're, we're not a not-for-profit, we're actually a profit um, organization, but we'll give back to community, we'll feed the hungry, we'll give them all of that, so that's it. So in terms of the food shortages that are happening worldwide, so there's one that's happening currently in the Philippines. Actually, I heard yesterday or two days ago that there was a crisis even just recently in, I believe it's Plateau State, where 300 people were killed. You know, so there are global crises, crises rather, happening across the world that involve food, that involve terror. What can we do to change these things? How do we alleviate the suffering? How do we alleviate the hunger? I think apart from um, agriculture, what we can also do is that we can give back to the society, basically. Mm. Some of us can, you know, basically say, oh, okay, if I can help about two, ten people yeah. that I need, you know, we go a long way. Absolutely. If hundred people help ten people each, that's like, you know, hundred times ten. That's so 1, unfortunately, 000, so we have run point. out of time, <laughs> but staying with what you just said, if one person can feed ten people, I believe we have up to 10 people in this studio. <laughs> Shall we eat cake? <laughs> that brings us to the end of the morning show today. Thanks once again to my wonderful guest, Lamade Smith, and my Wonder Woman, Labo Daniel, for joining me, Katira King. And of course, thanks to you at home for watching. From my entire team and I here in Lagos, all that's left for me to say is enjoy the rest of your morning and, of course, the rest of the day. Bye. So now we can chat and eat. This is so delicious. Thank you.